uh, about how we're implementing uh, biological farming and uh, soil enhancement here on our farm. And um, so the reason that we're focusing on other, our soils is because it's, um, it's an untapped area for improvement on our farm. And what I mean by that is we've gotten really good at managing the top part of our trees, the part of the trees that you see. Horticulturally, we have been really intensive with our foliar nutrition, with our pruning program. And I remember in the past, growing up in cherries, um, one of the things that people thought they could do to improve their farm was just prune better. It was, well, let's prune better. Well, let's prune better. Well, let's prune better. Well, you're, you're not going to be able to prune your way out of the challenge that we face in cherries. So you're going to have to do other things to make your farm, unless you're gigantic, competitive. And so we have to ask ourselves as farmers, what can we do to make that orchard over there more competitive against younger blocks, against more high density blocks, and improving the soil is something that we can do. When you prune your orchard, you generate big wood that can't go through your traditional flails, right? And then you got to haul that wood out of the orchard. And how many of you, every year, haul all your wood, it's all done perfect, you never leave any out there all season, or maybe not get to it till the second year. And it always seemed like it seems like it's the wood hauling crews where the guys bonk their head or they roll off the trailer. I mean, it's just a lot of time spent hauling carbon, which is what that wood is, out of the orchard, and then you sell it as firewood or you burn it or you do whatever with it. I hate to say that I used to do that same thing and I thought, ah, no, there's not enough time to do any of that grinding wood in the orchard. I mean, that's crazy. So we bought a flail that is able to flail anything that's six inches around or less can go through that flail and it shreds it in one pass. I mean, look at how many passes we have to do with our little wimpy three-point flails when you're driving around. You have to make pass after pass before it's really chopped down. Well, this, this, this puppy does it in one pass. So when I look at our acres of orchard, how many acres we've got, we paid for that flail in one year, the first year we used it, and not having to haul all that wood that instead we're shredding in the orchard. Well, man, that's like fourth grade math. That's great. That's all money in my pocket. The other thing is, is that's not taking into any of the account the biological stimulation that we're getting in our soil by taking all of that carbon grinding it up and putting it back on as mulch. So um, I, really like the, I really like the flail that we use, but that's only, that flail only chops a brush and drops it in the alleyway. And so a few years ago, we saw, I came upon this um, type of flail that's right here, the blue flail there. And that flail has an auger in the back that catches everything that's going through the cutting chamber and it augers and it throws it out the side. And what I really liked about that is it could mow brush and it can mow grass that's, you know, as tall as I am, which granted isn't as tall as some people, but that's a lot of grass. And it can blow it to the side. And so it makes mowing and blowing really easy. So when we, uh, when we prune, we go through with our power pruner crew first and they make big cuts and we stack the big wood and we make a pass over it with our big, our big mower and then we come right away with the blue mower. And the reason we do that is if we cut uh, just with the big mower and then we let that, um, we let that shredded wood just lay in the, in the orchard, um, I don't know the technical term, but essentially it sticks to the ground. It gets sort of bound with the soil. And the, the blue mower doesn't lift up and throw as much over as if you just pass through it on the same day and uh, make a pass right away. So what we do for any given day is our brush mowing crew, we go through with the orange mower and we're just a couple lines ahead of the blue mower and the blue mower fo follows right behind and we mow and blow everything over to, um, to the side. And then when we go through with our detail crew and we make our cuts, we, we, can, we don't use the orange mower, we can cut small stuff, you know, that's an inch, inch and a half and smaller, it goes right through that blue mower fine.